Welcome to the 2020 Absolute Classics Festival. I want to take this chance to say a huge thank you to our sponsors, trusts and foundations and individual donors who helped make these concerts happen. Tonight's concert is sponsored by Printpoint Limited, a commercial printer based in Cumbria and southwest Scotland. For a number of years now, they have been providing Absolute Classics with all of our printing needs, including our brochures, our posters, and our festival banners. You too can support Absolute Classics by checking out the description section below. This evening's concert is brought to us by the incredible Scottish flautist Stephen Clarke. He has been to perform for Absolute Classics on a number of occasions and it really does give me great pleasure to welcome him back to perform for us tonight. Hello, my name is Stephen Clark and I just want to begin by saying how pleased I am to be here to play for you today. Originally, of course, this was supposed to be a real life recital with my friend Ashley Beecham, but due to the current circumstances, that's not possible at the moment. So I just want to say a huge thank you to Alex and his team at Absolute Classics for moving these concerts online, because it still gives musicians like me, who have had every single concert around the world cancelled, it gives us an opportunity still to play and perform and work. So I really appreciate that. Thank you, Alex. Also, a big thank you to the Amani Centre in Manchester, the place I'm standing right now. They have very kindly allowed me to come in here to film this concert for you. And also, a huge thank you to Printpoint and Carlisle. Printpoint are the sponsors of today's concert, and we couldn't do this without you, so thank you so much for that. Now, you at home can also get involved. You can follow all of the social media accounts of Absolute Classics, and that'll keep you up to date with the different concerts going on in this particular festival, and in fact, all the different musicians that Absolute Classics present through the entire year. Now, I'm going to play three pieces for you for solo flute. The solo flute repertoire is nowhere near as extensive as the solo violin repertoire, but actually we're still blessed with some really great music. And the first piece I'd like to play for you is by an Argentinian composer called Astor Piazzolla. Piazzolla, of course, is the master, was the master of the tango and wrote an absolute ton of music inspired by the tango for a whole different uh, load of combinations of instruments, including just the solo. We're lucky enough to have six little tangos by Piazzolla for solo flute. Part of a set of studies which he simply called the tango etudes. They're very, very popular to perform for flute players. Now, Piazzolla himself was not actually a flute player. He was a bandonian player. The bandonian is a little bit like an accordion, a kind of squeeze box style instrument, and has been really influential in the development of the tango over the years. But you can definitely hear this kind of bandonian influence even in these pieces. For solo flute. And at the beginning of the, the book, Piazzolla actually writes a message for the flute player and he says that we have to try and approach it in this bandonian style. For example, when we articulate our notes, he wants us to be heavier and harder with the artic articulation than perhaps we normally would. And also with the breathing, you know, as flute players, we spend our whole life trying to hide the breath and make it as quiet as possible. But Piazzolla says, don't do that. He says he wants the breath to be heard and he wants it to be part of the music. So these are really cool, really quirky little pieces. And I'd like to play the third one for you, which is probably the most famous. So this is Astor Piazzolla's Tango Etude number three. Thank <laughs> you. 
The Partita for solo flute by Johann Sebastian Bach is probably the cornerstone piece in the solo flute repertoire. However, it was actually only rediscovered in 1917, which is not very long ago at all. 103 years in music is really nothing worth talking about. And even more bizarrely is that on the original manuscript that they found, Bach's name is mentioned. In fact, no composer's name is mentioned at all. So we can't be completely certain that this is actually by Bach. However, loads of music academics and scholars and historians and professors, they've all come along over the years and they've really analyzed this piece and they've looked at the handwriting and compared it to other scores of Bach and also to other pieces such as the, the partitas for violin, for solo violin. And they're pretty confident, they've come to the conclusion that it is probably if not definitely, by Bach. And uh, it's a great piece, it's very important to flute players. And it comes in four movements, and each of them is like a dance. Uh, the first one is an Allemande, which is a German dance, a slow, stately German dance. This is followed by a beret, sorry, by a courant, which is a very lively movement. In fact, the courant is the only, pe uh, the only movement in the original score that has any detail written in by the composer um, in terms of slurs, articulation, dynamics, this kind of thing. The other three movements have been left completely bare and blank by the composer. The third movement is a saraband, which is a very slow, sad lament. And then it finishes up with the final movement, which is a beret on glaze, an English dance, almost like a little jig. So this is the partita for solo flute in A minor by, we think, Johann Sebastian Bach.
I'd like to finish off by playing a piece for you by the Polish composer Krzysztof Zagraja. Zagraja actually has quite a large catalogue of compositions, but he isn't particularly well known, surprisingly. Um, he wrote three pieces for the flute, for solo flute, which he compiled into a set of studies, just like Piazzolla did earlier on. Except Zagraja calls these the three virtuoso flamenco studies, and they're exactly what you might expect from that title. They're very virtuosic, very flashy, and hugely inspired by flamenco music. Clearly, Zagraja also was a big admirer of Bach, and he is heavily influenced by Bach in a lot of his compositions, including this one. In fact, from the first note right to the last note, you can hear many quotes of the famous Toccata and Fugue for the organ by Bach. Um, and Zagraja kind of takes this and unashamedly adds his virtuosic flamenco spin. Um, and it's a great addition to the repertoire for solo flute. Thank you so much for listening to today's concert. It's been a real pleasure to play for you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the festival. But to finish my concert, here is the Virtuoso Flamenco Study Number 1 by Zagraja. <laughs>